Hello, everybody! That's right, don't adjust your screens. We are back here at the Behind the Dice podcast. That is right, we are back. I know it's uh, it's been a minute since uh, we've had a show like this, but here we are. All right. So... This is Behind the Dice, and I'm very glad to be back here talking with you guys. Um, So I wish I had a very good reason as to why there hasn't been a show in, what, like two, two and a half months? Uh, like, I wish I had like a really cool reason as to why that was the case, but all I can really say about that is um, my schedule changed very drastically and very quickly, so... Uh, usually I'll, I'll record these shows early in the morning and then hopefully get them out by mid afternoon. Um, but I work every morning now, so it's just, my schedule has been all over the place. So, um, I don't know how consistently I can make these podcasts. I'm going to be making as many as I can. Um, but there are other YouTube videos I've been making. I've been making, uh, deck builds, uh, which is kind of one of my favorite things to make right now. Um, I'm still very active on Twitter, and you can find my deck builds on the Deck Builder website. Um, so yeah, um, today we're going to be talking about worlds. Yes, I know, I've made a point to be the very last person to talk about worlds, but guess what, we're going to anyway. We're not just going to be talking about um, worlds and you know, the tournament that just took place, but, uh, my future plans with worlds next year. Uh, we're going to be discussing some of the recent spoilers that came out, which is very exciting. I'll be talking about them a little more in depth. than I did my quick reaction video that I put on YouTube and we're also going, I'm also going to be giving my review of solo, a star Wars story. Um, I kind of put a couple little notes on Twitter about it, about how I felt. But now I feel like I can really talk about it in depth. So, yeah, that's the plan for today. Sit back, relax, enjoy the podcast. And let's get on to our first topic, and that is Worlds. You know what? I'm changing that. I lied. I'm not talking about Worlds first. Our first topic is going to be the spoilers, actually. We can talk about Worlds. Worlds isn't really that important. Um... We're going to be talking about the spoilers right now. Let me just change the plan here a little bit. Okay, so I lied. Our first topic is not Worlds. Our first topic will be spoilers. Then we'll talk about Worlds um, after this. So, uh, yesterday, a couple new cards from the upcoming Way of the Force set were released. Well, kind of released. They were spoiled. They're just kind of like pictures of the cards. Um... And we have three new ones and three very, very interesting ones. Three cards I'm very, very excited about. Um, I'm excited about this set as a whole. Um, So far, I've seen, from what we've seen of the spoilers, which, by the way, I'm going to be making a probably a full podcast dedicated to all the spoilers. I can talk about them all in depth, or I might make that just like a video. I don't know if that'll be a podcast, but look out for that. But anyway, um, I'm actually very, very excited about this set, especially because I think it really, really complements the Legacy set very well. Um, I think it's obvious that's what they are going for. And honestly, I think that's a very, very good direction to go. Um, Because Legacies, I thought, Legacies might be my favorite set of of the game so far. But this one... This way, the four set is looking pretty good so far. So, the first uh, spoiler we're going to be getting into of the three is Rex, who is going to be a legendary character. He is Red, hero, obviously, if you know the character from the TV shows. Um, He will have 11 health, not bad. He will be 11 for one die and 14 for elite. I like the sound of that. And his dice size, I'm actually in love with his dice size. He has one range, two range, 
two indirect, a focus, a resource, and a blank. Any any die with a focus. I, I love dice that have focuses on them. It's just it's just such a it's a very good side to have have on a dice. And I'm very excited that Rex has one. As well as well as three damage sides. So that's that's very encouraging too. Um so he has an ability here. It says before you activate this character, you may spend one resource or spot a clone trooper to take control of the battlefield. Now this is very interesting. Um on the surface it doesn't sound like much. Like ah take control of the battlefield, what does that really do? Maybe you can play stuff like dug in or defensive position. Um you know, that that could be really helpful. Um but I'm curious to see, and we'll talk about uh, a battlefield in a second. I'm curious to see like what kind of battlefields will will be in this set to make it really, really worth his ability. Um, because it looks like they're really moving forward with how they're going about battlefields and their role in the game. I wonder what um what other battlefields will be in this set and how. It will complement Rex. Um, clearly, this character is designed to go with two clone troopers. Um, you know, just based on his ability alone. Because to use this ability, again, depending on which battlefields are used, to use this, like, I don't think people are going to want to spend the resource to do this. Unless, like, you have a battlefield that's really, really good. Um, you know... You get clone troopers out there. You still have good damage. You also have, you'll have good health. Um, we might be seeing that uh, with Rex. Um, yeah, Rex is a very, very exciting character. Um, I think it's what Red Hero needs. A low-cost uh, Red Hero that can do good damage. Um, you know, I think he... I'm trying to think of like other pairings he would go for. He would go with um, that isn't just uh, clone troopers. I don't know. I, that, that's something I'll, I'll need to kind of look at later. Um, kind of see what we can come up with because there's still other things in this box we don't know about. But all I know is that we have we have a very good looking red hero character here. He is a legendary. Now the debate will be. Is he worth legendary status? Is this ability good enough? Are his size good enough? Does he have enough health? Um, I'm leaning towards yes, only because he's only 14 for elite with three free damage sides. By the way, that's a that's a big one there. All his damage sides are free, and he has a focus. So, and depending on what kind of battlefields we're going to be seeing in this set, his ability has the potential to be very very good. Um, it, it's still pretty good with with the battlefields we have now, but it potentially has to be very good depending on which battlefields are used are in this um are in this set. So yes, I am leaning towards he is worth the legendary status, um, which I it's almost like it's almost like Finn in a way. Like he's a better Finn in my opinion. Like Finn when he came out. In the last set, it's like, yeah, he's okay. He he looks pretty good. Um, but no one really uses him. I think I think Rex will be a better Finn. Um, he has better dice sides, a better ability. So it, it's good to see them really, really putting out some good red hero characters here. Moving on to the next spoiler is something I am stoked about. Absolutely blown away by and it's a battlefield and you're probably wondering how can you get blown away by a battlefield it's just a battlefield how great can it be well they've totally changed the game with battlefields here we have bendu's lair if you remember bendu is that big dude in rebels um that's kind of all i'll say about that and uh it's a battlefield but this battlefield has a, di a die yeah, it has a die, and that is very, very interesting. This is a direction I just didn't think about. I just didn't think, yeah, it, we could totally have um, 
you know, battlefields with dice. Like, it's just one of those things that I, just, I don't think anyone really thought about. I don't remember hearing anyone talking about it. And now that it's here, people are like, oh, wow, that makes sense. Um, or at least I am. So, its dice sides are as follows. One range, two indirect, a focus, two shields, and a resource. That's actually a really good dice side. Um, really good, and a blank, of course. Really good dice sides there. So, it has a power action. Roll this die into your pool. Okay. After you take control of this battlefield, remove its die. So, it, it kind of sounds like it'll play the role of, almost like a support card. So, I guess, alright, you have the battlefield to start the turn. You use his power action, which is your action, to roll him out. And it's in your pool. But, if you claim the battlefield, you have to remove the die. I, ge I guess. Um... Or, or actually, here's here's another way to use it. If you have a card like Rex where you take control of the battlefield, let's say your opponent has this for their battlefield, so they have the die. They have the, the, the like, it's rolled out, all right? And they're about to do some damage with it. If you have a card or if you use Rex to take control of the battlefield, that dice is gone. That's very interesting. Um... So it almost adds more importance to taking control of the battlefield. So, like, let's look at a card like Hasty Exit for a second. You know, right now it's not a huge deal if you're giving the opponent the battlefield um, with a card like Hasty Exit. But now, if you use Hasty Exit, um, you know, you're, you're really, like, it's really kind of, I guess the die is removed because your opponent will be taking control of the battlefield. Yeah, so you're basically removing the die on your own if you rolled it out, and you used a power action to do it. Um, that's very interesting. Uh, I wonder if there'll be more battlefields like this. I kind of hope there is, especially if this works. I re I'm really wondering how this is going to work and how many people are actually going to use this um, in games. The way I look at it is it's an extra dice for free. You know, it doesn't cost anything. Nothing about nothing about this the die costs anything. So I get the feeling a lot of people are gonna want to use this just for the sake of oh, I have another another dice to use because you know people are making decks with to start with five dice. You know, having dice out in this game is very important. So another you know yeah, this kind of acts like a support. But you have to be smart with it. If you take control of it, the the die is gone. Um. So very interesting. I'm very excited that they have um added this element to the game, and I can't wait to see what it adds to the game as a whole. Um, and maybe we'll see more battlefields like this. Moving on to our final spoiler. We have a plot card. I love plot cards. I love that they're moving forward with plot cards. And we have a red hero plot card called Long-Term Plan. It costs three points. And its action is exhaust this plot to place one resource on it or to resolve one of your dice. Increasing its value by the number of resources on this plot. So again, it's almost this is almost working as a free support. So you exhaust it and you place a resource on it. Um, and you can keep you can keep doing this throughout the game. Let's say you have four resources on this. Next time you exhaust it, you're adding four to a resolved die. So you're if you're dealing out three damage, add four to it. Boom, there's seven. By just simply exhausting the the plot card, um, yeah, I think it's really cool. It's it costs three, so I wonder, you know, how many people are actually going to be able to use it because of its higher cost. But I think its ability might be worth worth it. Um, again, I like what they're doing, how they're progressing stuff like plot cards. And how they're progressing stuff like battlefields. It's very, very encouraging. Um, let me just adjust here. Yeah. Um, because they uh, had another plot card too. A blue one. I forget what it was called. But yeah. It's very, very cool seeing that 
um, stuff like plot cards and battlefields are becoming a more important part of the game. Um, it's very encouraging to see. Uh, and again, this is Red Hero. So they're really, really, really trying to make Red Hero good. And that's very cool. Um, so yeah, that's kind of all I have to say about that. Um, you know, you can do something like exhaust it and increase a resource side by three and you get four resources or you get three shields or you or if you're milling someone you make them discard four or five cards in your entire hand like this this ability on this plot card on long-term plan is very very versatile you can do a lot of things with it and that's very exciting to see so yeah um those are the most recent Way of the Force spoilers. Uh, I'm very, very excited. I think that Way of the Force will complement Legacies very well. And, and you know, I really like the direction they're taking with, with certain kinds of cards like Battlefields and Plots. Cards that we kind of take for granted sometimes. They're really trying to make it an integral part of the game. So that's very nice to see. And hopefully we see more of that in the future. Moving on to our next segment here, we're going to be discussing worlds. And like I said, I know I'm probably the absolute last person to talk about worlds. Like, worlds happened, what, weeks ago? A month, month and a half ago. Happened a while ago. Um... But I just feel the need to kind of put my two cents into it. I didn't really make a separate video on it because I wanted to be part of the podcast instead. So, Worlds, uh, plot twist, blue villain one. I I don't think... <laughs> I think most people saw that coming. I think some people thought, oh, maybe uh, Sabine Ezra can can uh, make a big splash, which it, which it did. Compliments to... Jack from Golden Dice. Um, and, you know, some people thought that, like, Qui-Gon Yoda could sneak in there, or Ray Ayla could sneak, could sneak in there. Um, you know, which, what, Ray Ayla got second, right? So, th those, those decks did, but again, I'm not shocked that Blue Villain won the whole thing. I thought it was going to be a seventh sister, or a, yeah, seventh sister deck, just because, like, they just you just get so many dice out with it and you can do so much damage with it um but the fact that it was kylo anakin um really doesn't shock me at all <laughs> honestly so because you you have thing I, I don't know i know the list is up i didn't like memorize it or anything like i i'm sure there were some ancient sabers in there there were some mall sabers in there you know, like, all those shenanigans that go on with blue anything, especially blue villain. Um, so, yeah, kudos to, um, you know, Kylo Anakin there. Not a big surprise. Uh, there were a couple surprise, surprise decks in there that, you know, that I think, like, Aura Singh and Mother Talzin. I'm glad Talzin placed well in the tournament because I, I Talzin's one of my favorite characters in the game. So I'm glad that that she plays somewhere in there. And Aura Singh is like, geez, you don't, you haven't heard anything about her in forever. Next thing you know, she's placing in a tournament. Um, so yeah, uh, Worlds looked really fun, but um, as a lot of you maybe have seen, I've kind of started my Road to Worlds 2019 campaign here, and all it really is is me just building a ton of decks, testing a ton of decks, seeing what would work well. And I can't really do much more than until Way of the Forest comes out, which will let me make more decks and more decks. And I'm very, very excited because it is my goal to get to Worlds next year. Um, I'm back on the tournament circuit, actually playing tournaments. Um, doing all right so far. Um, you know, some of my favorite builds have been uh, Zeb Lobot or Han Leia. No, I, even, I tried out Boba Phasma. So... Yeah, that's kind of that's what's been going on with me and Worlds. Uh, that's kind of what the 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 Road to Worlds 19, 2019 campaign really is. Um, 
I just want to keep testing out as many decks as possible. Uh, and hopefully I can get to Worlds next year. That'll be very exciting if I do. So, yeah, that's kind of... I just kind of wanted to put my two cents in about Worlds and talk about what I thought. Um, again, talk about how not surprised I am that uh, a blue villain deck won the whole thing. So, yeah, let's move on to our next segment and final segment, which is my review of Solo, A Star Wars Story. Let me just adjust the mic here a little bit. There we go. <sighs> my review of Solo, A Star Wars Story. So, there's been a lot of talk. Maybe this movie is underperforming. Maybe it's, you know, kind of, it was kind of a mistake for Disney to do. You know, pr the production of it, 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 there were a lot of twists and turns, directors leaving, new ones coming in, reshoots, all this kind of stuff. And oh, by the way, this was a movie, did anyone really ask for this movie? I don't think so. I sure didn't. Um, But... When I go in to watch a movie, I, tr I try to put all that stuff aside, and I want to judge the movie on what it is, a movie. What did I just watch? And it's a shame because this is probably the first Star Wars movie that I just was, like, losing sleep, that I wasn't losing sleep over. Like, I wasn't, like, obnoxiously excited for this movie. Um... I'm like, okay, like, my, my expectations were very low. Like, a year ago, I had no expectations. I was terrified of this film. I said, how how in the world are they going to put a new Han Solo in this universe? How, especially how Star Wars fans are, how are they going to accept this guy as Han Solo? Same thing with Lando Calrissian and all that. So, um, all that stuff I, I tried to put aside. And watch the movie for what it is. So, my first initial thought was, that was fine. This movie was fine. It was a very fun ride. There was a lot of really, really good uh, action pieces in this. It was fine. But then I remembered, I'm not okay with Star Wars movies just being fine. Um, You know... Like, ah, man, it wasn't bad. Like, I think uh, there's a lot of people out there that think the movie's bad, but there's a lot of people out there that think it's, like, really good. And I'm, like, in the middle. Like, some people, like, maybe it's just because the character is Han Solo, and maybe just because it is a Star Wars movie and there was some cool stuff in it that people think is, like, really, really good. And it was fine. I don't think it was, I don't think it was bad. Like, I think, like, Rogue One is, like, miles ahead of this one. But that's just me. Um, so, so a couple things I really liked about it. First of all, the, the cinematography in this movie was gorgeous. There were some shots that I'm just like, wow. Or some just great Star Wars shots. And, like, I think that's kind of being underplayed right now. Like, there are just some amazing shots in this movie. Like... You know, stuff um, on the Kessel Run, stuff uh, wherever they were. I don't know. Like, I forget all the all the names. Um, you know, oh, yeah, like that, that Imperial battle. Like, just how rugged it was, you know. Um, then, like, in, like, the Imperial, like, camp, how, like, when uh, Han was um, in the Imperial forces and they were kind of in their camp, had, the, like, the, the gray and the muddy... Some very, very good, cinema, great, actually, cinematography in this movie. Um, I think that went a long way. The acting performances, I thought, were very, very good all around. I was very pleased with the acting performances. That was one of the thing, things I was scared of going in. But Alden, Ar Aaron, Alden Ehrenreich, his name, who played Han, there were points in this movie where I'm like, yes, he def this is Han Solo. He's captured the spirit of Han Solo. Um, he has the right mannerisms of Han Solo. Um, 
he's doing a very, very good job, you know, doing this daunting task of portraying Han Solo and not being Harrison Ford. Um, so kudos to him. He did a very, very good job. I'm actually very impressed by the job he's done. Uh, and then how can you not mention Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian? First of all, Donald Glover, I think, is one of, if not the best overall entertainer in the world right now. This guy makes really good music. He's a really good comedian. He's a very good actor. And he, he's just at the top right now. And he did a tremendous job as Lando Calrissian. Um, just the stuff, how he presented stuff. Like, I just didn't, I didn't feel like he was trying to imitate um, what, Billy D. Williams, who played Lando Calrissian back in the original trilogy. He just, he kept the mannerisms consistent. He kept, you know, certain phrasing of words, like how Lando would say it, consistent. Like, I think Donald Glover was lost in that role. Like, I didn't see Donald Glover. I saw Lando Calrissian. And if you're trying to play a character, especially a well-known character like Lando, that's the most important thing, um, is that you don't see the actor, you see the character. And uh, Donald Glover definitely, definitely um, achieved that. Um... You know, yeah, I think all the characters all around were very good, very good acting, Woody Harrelson and all them. I think they did a very good job. Uh, What's-His-Face that plays Vision did a very good job. Um, so, yeah, uh, the performances were very good. Other pros, other really positive things about this movie, you know, the action was great. The action kept me on the edge of my seat very well shot, very well choreographed, very, very good action, which, by the way, um, I think the balance of CGI and practical effects was very effective in this movie. There were some practical effects that I was like, man, we haven't seen something like that in a Star Wars movie for a while. So I really appreciated that. Um, so, it, it, yeah, it, it was very fun. There was a lot of fun elements to it, but <laughs> this was far from perfect. Some of the negative things that I found about this movie it was very predictable like i'm not gonna get into the spoilers because no i'm just not dealing with that um like there was th like there was maybe one twist where i was like whoa i didn't see that coming and like i kind of saw it coming just based on like some like little hints and little things i noticed like in promotion and you know it was something where, like, I was like, oh, this, that could be a thing, but I don't know if it really will, and it was. I was just surprised to actually see it. Like, that was the only real surprise. But there are just, there are some air quote plot twists in this movie where I'm like, well, I saw that coming the first time this character was introduced. Um, There were some deaths in this movie where I was like, well, I didn't see a lot of this person in promotion. I didn't see this other person at all in promotion, so there's no way this person is going to survive very long. Um, and it, just the overall predictability of the movie, I was just kind of like, eh, really? Like, at least try to be a little more creative with it. Um, it. Like, it's any insert heist movie and put a Star Wars skin on it. Like, I I make the comparison to EA's um, Battlefront. Like, it's Battlefield with a Star Wars, with Star Wars paint on it. That's how I felt about Solo, was that it's, it's literally any heist movie, but Star Wars, kind of. So yeah, uh, the plot was very, very predictable. Um, I thought that a lot of the dialogue was not that great. Uh, like, there are some lines in this movie where I'm like, really? Like, did you really just say that? Like, I don't think anyone really wanted to hear that. Um... I think that might have been a product of reshoots. That might have been a product of multiple directors working on this thing after you know people leaving and new people coming in. Um, you know, so yeah, like uh, the, the 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 dialogue was very very questionable, um, which is disappointing because I'm pretty sure that the uh, 
the writers of this movie, didn't they write Empire? And, like, Empire has really good writing, and I'm just like, ah, man, like, I really, I just, I really wish the writing was better. Um, some other, some other negatives, uh, the villain was lame, he was very meh. I'm just like, man, he had, it was frustrating because he had potential, it was, uh, Vision's character, he had, he had potential, but they just didn't really do anything with him, which was very disappointing because he's a very good actor. And if they, you know, wrote him a good script or wrote, you know, gave him more to do, I think he would have been a lot better. Um, what else? Things I didn't like about the movie. Um, yeah, like that, like that's, it's very general, but this movie's very general. Like, there's really not much to talk about with this movie. Like, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Like, there aren't really any spoilers for. There might be one where, you're like, oh snap! But I've seen this movie before. I've seen this movie before, and it's a shame that I had to go see it again. I thought it would be different, um, but it really wasn't. You know. Any kind of predictions you've had, you're most likely right. Like, I wouldn't, like, make any stretches prediction-wise with this movie. You know, if you're trying to predict stuff, if you make a general prediction, you're probably correct. Um, which which stinks, because that kind of takes the fun out of it. Um, so, y- you know, it was fine. The movie was okay. Um, it definitely wasn't the strongest edition uh, in the line of Star Wars movies, but it's definitely a welcome addition in in the Star Wars universe. Um, it's just I really hope that Disney kind of puts more effort into movies like this. I really hope they don't. The worst mistake Disney can make is assuming that the fans will just you know be happy with a mediocre film with action and lasers and and pew pews. Um, because they won't, and I think the numbers of this movie are starting to show for it. It's underperforming, especially from a Star Wars movie standard. Um, so, yeah, it, it, I had a fun time with it. I was like, you know what? My expectations were low, and it exceeded those expectations. And so I just I had a good time with it. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't flawless. It was fine. That's, that's the one word I would use to describe Solo a Star Wars story, and that's fine. So, yeah, those are all all the topics for today. I know we're a little under time than usual. Um, hopefully, I can get more podcasts out for you guys. Um, so where can you find this? You can find this podcast, well, you, all our podcast episodes on SoundCloud, um, SoundCloud and YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter at Behind the Dice, no spaces, no caps. Um, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, you know, I'm making videos, a lot more videos now. Um, so be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can see them, share it with your friends, share it on Twitter, do what you can. And yeah, I'm very excited to be back making podcasts. It's very fun. I love doing it. Uh, it was a shame that I had to stop for a little bit there, but I'm back. And I can't wait to talk about more Star Wars. Star Wars anything with you guys. It's really up in the air. Um, So all we have to do now is just wait for the Way of the Force box. I'm very, very excited. Uh, I think it's been showing off very good things. And I think it's going to be a very good compliment to Legacies, which is already a very good set. So... That's all we have to talk about today here on the Behind the Dice podcast. Again, follow me on Twitter at Behind the Dice. No spaces, no caps. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Look for us on SoundCloud. Thank you very much for joining joining me, guys. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you on the next podcast. Later. Later.